What about for you? What's coming up for Mark Scott? Well, I think it's going to be a busy year. I I'm, uh, had a good break and I'm looking forward to the challenges. I think, um, you know, we need to get out there and make the argument as to why the ABC is important and significant in a changing media world. I think most people I meet are very grateful that the ABC is there. Our research shows that nine in 10 Australians think we provide a terrific service that's strong value for money. But you know, we have critics out there, we have competitors out there who would, who would like us to be weaker. We've got some people who would like us to go away and, and they're talking in because of their shareholders and their commercial interests. Well, I'm most interested in our shareholders and that's the Australian people. So I think we've got uh, more change to drive I think we've got to ensure that our quality remains high. We've got to remain distinctive in a crowded marketplace. But um, I'm looking forward to the year. I'm looking forward to be able to make our funding case in Canberra. I think the election campaign will be a good test and good challenge for us. And I think the media remains the single most fascinating place uh, to work. And if you're going to be working in the Australian media, uh, the ABC is a terrific place to be as well. So I'm um, looking forward to the year ahead. And what about when your tenure at the ABC ends? Have you thought about what might be next? Oh, for you? well, I, I, you know, as I sometimes say to people, I, I've still got three and a half years to, uh, to run on my uh, current contract. So that's a lifetime in media terms. And so I think it's often best not to think, not to think too far ahead. Uh, uh, I never thought I'd be in uh, this job. And I'm astounded that I've been in it for six and a half years. You know, it's really gone by very quickly, uh, but it's endlessly fascinating. So. Why worry about something down the track or think too much about something down the track when what you're doing today is so fascinating and engaging and worthwhile. So um, I'm happy. Given your newspaper experience and everything that's going on in the world of newspapers, yeah. would you ever go back? I'm really happy where I am and I think, uh, you know, yep, I, I owe a lot to newspapers. I've uh, had a long association with them. I've been reading newspapers for a long time, but around the world newspapers are struggling and uh, it's a challenge and so I look very carefully and closely at, at what different people are doing but uh, no I'm not in the newspaper business now I don't see myself back in the newspaper business I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. What's your sense for that industry though do you feel that? Well I think it's challenged I think it's, I think it's really challenged yeah mm -hmm. and, and, and what, I, um, what I suppose I wonder a little bit about is if you take away the print presence how much harder it is to just exist in, an, in a world that's only online. Um, and so I think that's part of the challenge is Fairfax, there's speculation as to whether Fairfax will get out of print down the track. Yeah, how strong are those websites without hundreds of thousands of those newspapers floating around? I don't think we know that. And I think part of the challenge about the newspaper business, frankly, is that there is no playbook that, you know, you look at, oh, well, in Italy they did that. And, it, you know, nobody has cracked the answer to it. Um, different people have different points of competitive strength. I think there's no doubt if you're a big global brand uh, offering information that is vitally important to people like a Wall Street Journal or a Financial Times or a New York Times, then you're in a better position than many others. But there's no answer that everyone's copying. And so, you know, it's a matter of time and it's a challenge. Well, thank you very much, Mark. Brooke, good to see you.